and I call the honourable member for Warringah. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. So I rise to speak on the Sport Integrity Australia amended, Amendment World Anti-Doping Code Review Bill 2020. The purpose of the bill is to amend the Sport Integrity Australia Act 2020 by expanding the operation and provisions to include those non-participants in sport to amend the definition of an athlete and other amendments. I can't start get into the technicalities of a bill, I think, without acknowledging my own personal experience with this, because it is one of those lucky days where I can actually combine so many areas of my life and passions and amazing opportunities that I've had. Uh, I first competed at the Winter Olympics when I was 17, and I think that was my first experience with, uh, from an international sport, the amount of codes and the amount of uh, legislation, but also testing and the need for sport to be clean. In those days, 1992, we hadn't yet really come to terms with uh, how uh, broad and how big a problem uh, doping had become in sports, especially um, around Olympic sports and those kind of things. Um, but it was really interesting over the course of my career, from uh, in 1994 having to do a gender test to prove my uh, gender to be permitted to compete as a female at the Winter Olympics. Um, <laughs> to then be having to uh, undertake a number of doping tests. I'm probably one of the very few in this chamber, I would say, that has had to undertake a doping test. Um, and it, these are so important, and it is important that the international community has come together with these uh, legislations, with the wider code, to ensure that we have clean sport. If you speak to athletes about what it is that drives them to participate in sport, it is that passion about doing your best, about seeing what your limits are and see if you can go past them, uh, really trying to excel in something that you love doing. But one thing I think that a lot of athletes have in common is we tend to uh, like a clean playing field. People want to know that you're going to win or lose fair and square. You want to know that there are rules of play, that there's a procedure by which things uh, you can win or succeed, um, and that it is an even playing field. So it truly is a test of uh, your ability, your talent, your determination uh, and, and your skill. And so there is an, an incredibly disappointing experience where doubt enters sport, where uh, the results and those heroic outcomes get tainted by the allegations and, some, and when they are made out to be true, um, outcomes that sully the outcome, um, when, when allegations of, of cheating are made out to be true, it is such a disappointing moment for sport because we know that those that missed out on the opportunity to be on the podium because a drug cheat was there at the time um, will never get that moment back. You can rectify the record years down the track when science and technology has caught up, but you can never give back to the athlete the moment that's been lost, that opportunity to stand on the podium, mm -hmm. to hear the anthem, to watch your flag go up on the post. So it's really important that governments and sporting codes work as hard as possible in keeping sport as clean as possible. Sadly, maybe human nature, uh, there is always that desire to cut corners and find ways to cheat. Uh, but it is encouraging when internationally we come together to put solutions on the table. So the World Anti-Doping Agency, WADA, was established in 1999, um, and it's an international independent agency composed and funded equally by the sport movement and governments of the world. So it was widely recognised that everyone needed to come together for that. And its purpose is to research, to educate and develop anti-doping capacities and monitoring of World Anti-Doping Code. Because, of course, there's no point on having a code if it's not monitored and applied. And that's where it gets tricky. The agency, founded by the International Olympic Committee with the Declaration of Lausanne, was in response to the growing pressure stemming from doping episodes, including the, the allegations and the systemic uh, doping around the 1998 Tour de France cycling season. And I remember those days well, 98 being a year that obviously um, for me was a big year in my sporting career, but as well in 1999. And I saw that shift as an athlete competing where we were regularly drug tested uh, and had to engage with that process. Um, WADA has been a consistent positive sport uh, force in sports. 
its influence culminating in the banning of countries from competing in international events and labelling the playing field uh, and levelling the playing field in various sports. Uh, the World Anti-Doping Code, which WADA, WADA monitors, harmonises anti-doping policies, rules and regulations within sport organisations and among public authorities around the world. It works in conjunction with six international standards, which aim to foster consistency among anti-doping organisations in various areas. And what's important is that the WADA code is up for review on a regular basis, because what we know is we have to keep up to date with developments with the latest technology. Sadly, the cheats tend to always be a step ahead uh, of the, the movement and uh, authorities trying to catch them. In January 2003, the first code was approved in Copenhagen during the Second World Conference on Doping in Sport. And approximately 700 sports organisations have accepted the code. Signatories include sporting organisations that belong to the Olympic movement, national anti-doping organisations and national and international sporting federations outside the Olympic movement. Uh, the purpose uh, of the World Anti-Doping Code and the Do Anti-Doping Program are clearly to protect the athlete's fundamental right to participate in a clean and doping-free sport and promote health, fairness and equality for athletes worldwide, and to ensure harmonised, coordinated and effective anti-doping programs at the international and national level with regard to the prevention of doping. So Australia is a signatory of UNESCO Convention Against Doping in Sport, and under this convention we've agreed to implement the code. So I very much support the code and the international efforts to, come to fight doping. Uh, we have to have ongoing efforts to protect Australian sport, uh, but we also always need to be conscious. Uh, we've often been the first to accuse others, but find excuses for our own. I think we have to be consistent in making sure that we want clean sport everywhere. Um, it is an ongoing process and threats evolve over time. Uh, and and uh, no system is ever perfect. Uh, I was incredibly privileged to be a member of the Australian Sports Anti-Doping Agency under ASADA uh, and the, anti the ASADA Anti-Doping Rule Violation Panel for several years. Um, and it was incredibly uh, rewarding as a past athlete to have the opportunity to be then on the administrative side uh, of trying to reconcile applying the code and the rules and hearing the athletes and how they were dealing with the code and, and any transgressions. Um, in December 2017, WADA initiated a two-year, three-phase code review process which involved extensive stakeholder consultation regarding the code, the international standards and the Athletes' Anti-Doping Right Act. Um, the stakeholders identified 51 significant changes between current code and the 2021 version. Um, and some of the changes are substantial and very important. Um, it's been amended to reflect an increased emphasis on the importance of athlete health and to provide a better statement of ethical foundation. Um, we need to make sure that uh, under Article 211, the new anti-doping rule violation of threatening another person to discourage that person from the good faith reporting to authorities um, is important because, again, we often have a question of that it is through anonymous tip-offs that you start to be able to investigate uh, cheating behaviour. Uh, we need WADA accredited lab laboratories to um, have the ability to detect the minuscule quantities of prohibited substances in athlete samples, um, and that has increased exponentially. Timing is everything with a lot of these substances, um, and unless uh, and more often than not, it is the out of competition testing that is vital because it's when you're catching people in their preparation phase for big events uh, that you are more likely to catch people using banned substances. Um, so that ability to detect tail end of prohibited substances is very important because that sort of alleviates that pressure on timing a little bit. But it also um, raises the question of more people being caught inadvertently. There is an incredible onus on athletes that they bear responsibility uh, to be aware of anything that enters their body, which puts an incredibly high bar and a high responsibility, especially on junior athletes. 
Uh, when I was on the ASADA anti-doping rule violation panel, one of the most frequent occurrences we had was people getting caught out by their supplements. Uh, supplements that are, for example, uh, coming from overseas that have ingredients not automatically labelled up front, but if you search them on the internet, the substances become clear and some of the ingredients are clearly banned. Um, it was disappointing to see how often that was the problem and people getting caught. Um, a key theme of the review uh, was proportionality, where WADA aims to ensure the code targets the right stakeholders and applies consequences that are proportionate to an individual's culpability. This is where it gets really difficult because invariably most athletes caught will have a defence that they didn't mean to do it or it was an accident. Um, I don't think I've seen any athletes really ever come up and come clean and take responsibility. But we do need to be able to differentiate between where genuinely an athlete has been caught out by uh, a supplement or ingesting a substance completely inadvertently uh, and unknowingly uh, to uh, an attempt to uh, make up a story or hide. Um, and we've had some pretty amazing cases of, uh, around the world. Um, I was very um, uh, privileged to uh, as an arbitrator, I was uh, selected to go to the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics in 2018, and I, um, I sat on the Court of Arbitration for Sport, and in fact sat, sat on the appeals in relation to whether Russian athletes would be allowed, permitted to compete um, at those Olympic Games. Um, and that was in a case where it was incredibly systemic. Um, we saw 298 athletes investigated, 200 were caught doping, uh, and 47 Olympic medals were stripped. Um, and there were real concerns over systemic um, uh, approach to doping. Um, and that continues on today, uh, where we still have RISADA um, uh, and, and issues of compliance when it comes to the code and uh, true independent testing occurring. But what's also important about this bill is that it increases, uh, it extends the code to applying to relevant non-participants to be subject to the National Anti-Doping Scheme. Um, and that's important because what we find in the course of investigations that there are a number of parties involved over the process of how athletes come to be in possession of banned substances. Um, and we need to make sure all responsible are caught and uh, dealt with, and that may be medical practitioners providing it. It might be pharmaceutical. You know, we have to look at who is accessing these uh, substances. Um, the Sport Integrity Australia CEO has now discretion not to publish details of an anti-doping rule violation when it's a recreational or the athlete doesn't have the mental capacity to understand the rules. We have to be clear that consequences of a, an adverse analytical finding are severe. Athletes are, are incredible, are judged, and the damage to reputation is irretrievable more often than not. So we have to be very cautious in how the information becomes public. Um, the code is the foundation of anti-doping efforts internationally, and so it's very important that governments and national sporting organisations get behind it in keeping on improving it. Um, the most important message I can put out there, though, is for the athletes. You need to stay informed. Uh, under the code, you have to uh, log your whereabouts at all times. Um, you need to be aware of all uh, over-the-counter ingredients of any over-the-counter supplements. Um, and so it's very important for all to go to the Sport Integrity Australia website and make sure you are aware of your obligations and everything. Lastly, whilst the, sports, the fight against anti-doping and cheating in sport is incredibly important, we can't ignore the other issues sport faces. Uh, up there with doping is the risk and threat of gambling impacting the outcomes of sport and organised crime in association in that sense with gambling, having a huge impact on the integrity of sport. So I would urge the government to do more in combating that in making sure that we have strong uh, legislation to deal with any gambling and those consequences when it comes to sport. Sport should be about encouraging people to 
uh, do their best, inspire others to, to really perform and, and give 110 per cent. It's incredibly rewarding, but we need to keep it clean. Thank you. Thank you,